from the Denver Broncos Media Center. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight with Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight, breaking down the Broncos win over the Los Angeles Chargers 28-13. to Benjamin, all three phases showed up for this one. They did. Uh, this was a much-needed complete win for the Denver Broncos, and you know, you, you can't sit there and say, well, one one side didn't hold up their end. The pass rush was getting home. The secondary was covering. We got interceptions and turnovers. They got sacks on the offensive side. You, you know, the run game was uh, was carrying the team. I guess you could say the pass game could have showed up a little bit. But, you know, in the end, uh, you go with the uh, the one that's winning it for you. you running the football has been winning it for the Broncos, and it, it won it for the Denver Broncos. Well, right. this we, one. we can't spend all week pounding the table, run the ball. This is the worst-ranked run, run I'm defense. Sure, I'm sure Hater Radio will, but uh, <laughs> over here we're going to keep it honest but so. it's the worst ranked run defense for a reason it is and, and we saw and the, the broncos backup offensive line getting push off yes that. the broncos were down four starting offensive linemen in this game and still rushed for 147 yeah it's it's getting it done and you know they, they found a way to negate joey bosa whether that was uh, running away from him running him towards him teddy bridgewater stiff arming him on the way to the end zone uh it's you know it's it's Anytime you have a game like that, that's got to be a pick me up, and it's the right time to get a pick me up because you've got the 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 juggernaut, the powerhouse, the the monkey on your back, as it were, and the Kansas City Chiefs, eleven straight losses, uh, sitting right there in front of you going into this next game, and it's for first in the division. So you you kind of needed that come off the bye, confidence getting win, uh, and 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 not just like a close like we eat it out kind of win, like hey we put it to you. Teddy Bridgewater didn't take any sacks in this game. You remember how we said coming into this week? Yeah, he had the one where it was an incomplete pass. It was ruled initially yeah. a strip sack fumble. Right. But it was an incomplete pass. He did not take a single sack in this game. Now, Drew Locke took one, and mm. it was a fumble yeah. that Tim Patrick came up with. But that was the only one. And by the way, that sack went for zero yards. The Broncos... Went for a first down, I think. It, well, I mean, it did, but I'm saying the, the sack itself yeah. was at the line. Yeah. And so they didn't lo- they didn't have any negative yardage plays mm. when it came to, to sacks. So... It's remarkable to think about the depth of this team and and what they've been able to do, and that that obviously goes quite a bit to coaching. Yeah, they've been resilient. Um, you're still only six and five, so it's not like you're sitting here. But you look at some of these games that you could have should have would have. You know, look at the Cleveland game with Case Keenum and in a close you know, Thursday night game, you probably should have won. Uh, you look at the Eagles game, you you let get away from you, you probably should have won that. Um, and there are other chances they had to be in a couple of other games. And so I, I, this team could be better than the record. Um, I, I said we were going to find out who they were in the next two weeks. Well, it looks one way. we got Kansas City still to go. They get the win here, and now all of a sudden you're off to the races. Well, I, now, don't know. I, was, I was told by Mike Florio that they were overachieving at yeah, this point. Yeah, that was the most ridiculous comment I saw. <laughs> and then he's, you know, he's thin-skinned enough to jump in the comment section on of the course. after. But, no, I, I, I mean, like, this team is, they're a good football team. And, you know, the old adage, you are what your record says you are and all that. I get that. But they're a good football team. They've just got to find ways to put it all together at the same time and pull out wins. They did that this past weekend against yeah. the Chargers. And maybe that is, we keep saying that all throughout the course of the season, the blueprint, the blueprint. Mm-hmm. Coming off the Dallas game, we thought they had a bit of a blueprint. They came home and they they, they were a flat team against the Eagles. There there was a lot wrong with what their their game plan was. I said coming out of that game that maybe not having Pat Shermer was a bigger impact than we really wanted to give credit for. Mm. It seemed like they got back on track in this one, and they, they did it early on. But but also it was kind of impressive. We go to the defensive side, and of course we're going to get to Passer Tan and how impressed he was. But it, it seemed like they got Justin Herbert guessing a lot. Now he was moving the ball between the 20s, and that's a little bit of a hallmark of this defense. But they buckled down in the red zone. Uh, there were times where he was guessing a little bit out there for a guy that has that kind of arm talent and mm. the, the fact that he has diced up almost every other team in the league. That was something that I was pretty impressed to see. Yeah, this team is designed. They, they don't mind giving up yardage. They, they don't because that, that to them that doesn't matter. They're going to shut you down in the red zone. And they forced the Chargers into bad decisions going forward on fourth down when they weren't going to get it. Um, you know, it, there's – there's something to be said for the way that they play defense. And it might, you know, if you look at the advanced analytics, it might say their defense is bad. But if, if you look at the points allowed, which is the end result, um, they're doing pretty well this season. Well, and they got 19 pressures on Justin Herbert and they rushed four or fewer 88 percent of the time yeah that, and that's that's how you need to do it with this defense that's that's how you that's how this defense is designed to be run if you're blitzing a bunch which Fangio was at times uh there's something wrong you're not getting home um you have to send enough guys to get pressure Vic wants to, to send the least amount of people it takes to get that pressure you, you just have to find out what the sweet spot is with that it looks like now that Bradley Chubb is back and I think he got 30 snaps in that game yep. um 
that, you know, you're going to be able to get that. I think the best combination is going with Chubb and Weatherly with rotating Reed and Cooper in at times. Uh, but I think the best combination to start is those two. They seem to be able to set the edge and get home enough that it makes it okay. By the way, I thought uh, Cooper did pretty good in his matchup uh, against your boy, against Slater. Yeah, he did, actually. That was Slater's worst game as a pro. It's funny, yeah. I was actually uh, sitting with uh, Rashawn Slater's dad oh, for, a, for a large portion of the <laughs> nice. game. Uh, you know, talking about that and talking and his agent and talking about, you know, Slater and how if Sertan hadn't been here, he probably would have been here. He would have been the next pick uh, on the Broncos board, by the way. Um, and, and talking about that and talking about the, the different uh, the, the different scenarios and, you know, how well Slater had been playing up to this point. And, yeah, they, they made him look bad yeah and that came Cooper that was your first exposition to Rashawn Slater you might have come away saying where was the hype because he's been good all year and in that game he was not good yeah so that would have obviously impacted a little bit of Justin Herbert's play obviously as if uh, his best the best side of his offensive line which has been really good all season long Mm. struggled in that game uh getting to a couple other things that happened during the course of the game I thought of course the running game was spectacular we talked a little bit about that not much in the passing game so uh what do you make of that is that just a function of the Broncos knowing who they are they just paid two wide receivers are you a little concerned there that uh, of the optics of any of that or or more so than anything is it just a function of just who they are right now understanding that's an investment to the future yeah I, that's an investment to the future right now they're a run team yeah they had to pay those guys to keep them and they'll need them to show up at times later on but right now i'm not concerned with getting them three targets in fact i talked about that before the week i hope they don't force feed those guys yeah. because they feel like they need to yeah the hater radio and the bean counters out there are gonna sit there and well they're not getting the donuts for dollars and you know that's just stupid though at the end of the day you got the win and how you know it doesn't matter how you win as long as you get the win if you got if i gotta pay two guys each 30 million to sit on the outside and block for me run in every play if that's what works that's what works i don't care as long as we're getting the win and so, you know, I, I, that kind of stuff doesn't matter to me. If it, when, they, when we need them, if they don't show up, then it's a problem. But they didn't need them yesterday. They needed to run the football. They did run the football, and they won. And maybe that is a testament to where this team is at because how often over the last several years have we gone in to talk about a game after the fact and saying they gave it their all, really that was the best shot they had, and it really wasn't even close. The fact is you come out of this game knowing that you had other you had other motives. You had other ways that you could have mm-hmm. attacked. You have a lot of talent that went underutilized in this game, and maybe that's a good thing to have ultimately. Yeah, and I, I think that that's – I think that you know you can rely on certain aspects of your game now. Now you're going into Kansas City, and there's going to be some of – the you, you, you can't help – if you've lost to a team so often, you can't help but have a certain mind, a defeatist mindset almost about it. You've got to find a way to put that away. Little things draw confidence. And if you're, if you're able to be successful on certain plays throughout the year, and then you're able to go into that game and be successful early with a couple of those kind of plays, that's going to hype you up. That's going to give you the ability to believe in, you know, uh, belief and, uh, and all that. It's, it's just like a snowball going downhill. You know, like once you get a little bit, it just starts, it just starts going. It's momentum. Same thing, you know, yeah. it just starts going. And so uh, I think that's what they need to do. If they can come out and run the ball early, effectively against Kansas city, that's going to go a long way in that game. I'm excited to see what kind of team shows up. I like what Bradley Chubb said, by the way, uh, speaking with the media earlier saying that, when they traded Von Miller, it kind of sent a bit of a shockwave through the locker room, a bit of a kick in the pants, especially for the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, it, it kind of lines up a little bit with what you had been hearing, what I had been hearing from some players, that there were some guys that were looking, not not, not to move on from Von, but looking forward to an, an opportunity to have a leadership role, looking mm-hmm. forward to an opportunity to a bigger role on the field. And it certainly seems like that's showing. Yeah, I, I think that locker room, you know, you hate to say a locker room is better off for losing Von Miller, but I think that it was better off. Uh, I think, like turning the page. Yeah, I, exactly. I think it was. I think the next chapter in the book, we needed to get to the next chapter in the book. We've been stuck on this chapter for a long time. It's time to move on. And I, I, I think it was better for everybody involved. You could, there are personalities and voices in that locker room that needed to be heard and had to defer to Von Miller because of a seniority kind of thing. And now you're, they're able to lead their style, which resonates better with this locker room. I'm not trying to say that Von Miller is an old and wasn't getting across, not but the way that he did things wasn't working for these guys. The way that guys like Shelby Harris and Von uh, and, uh, and Justin Simmons do things is working for this locker so, room. So it's a great win. Uh, the Broncos controlled the game basically from start to finish. I love the way they finished, by the way, running the ball out. That's just what the Cleveland Browns did to them a few weeks ago. The Broncos were able to do. They didn't have to get the ball back to the defense and have them make another stop. Love that. That's that's a big confidence-building thing, I think, for the team. But there's, it wasn't perfect, right? Uh, you still had the interception. That was from Drew Locke. You still had a fumble there that you got a little bit lucky also from Drew Locke. What, what are some of the things that you learned from this game 
that will help you beyond the season because again I feel like each game for the Broncos is a little bit of piece of that puzzle of who they are ultimately trying to be yeah I, I, th- I think it's run the ball run the ball run the ball some more and when you get tired of that run the ball again um, I th- there are going to be moments where you're going to need to pass and all that kind of stuff but I, I think the reality is is if you can get these two running backs both going at the same time uh, you can really wear down another team we've just seen it over and over again just just Anytime that the Broncos get double-digit carries out of both running backs, they win. They're five and zero when that happens. They would be six and zero, except in the Washington game, one of Javante's runs was called back due to a penalty, so he only got nine attempts. Yep. But they would be their six wins. They would be six and zero with double-digit rushing attempts from both running backs, and that's what it is. That's what this team is. You don't have to outsmart people. You don't have to out sexy people. Just punch. Just be a, be a fighter. Punch them in the face until they go down, and that's how you got to do this. Seventy-three percent conversion rate on third down, their best of the season. And again, run the ball. There it is right there. Run the football. Put yourself in a position to mathematically be the most successful. That, that's what it is. You, you All season long in your losses, you'd ask Teddy Bridgewater to make throws uh, on third and eight where it's just not, that's not a winning formula. Go out there and punch him in the mouth. The identity and, and put the challenge on those running backs. Put, put the challenge to him. Hey, we're going to give you the football. We can't be in third and eight. So go out there and get me that yardage or I'm going to find somebody who can. Great win for the Broncos, 28-13. to Tomorrow, we'll spend some more time on the Kansas City Chiefs. Big game ahead. For Benjamin Albright, I'm Ryan Edwards. Thanks for watching Broncos Country Tonight.